felt compelled to offer my thoughts on what has been a an interesting time in the evolution of AduroClean Technologies. I want to jump in here and visit the initial announcement of uplisting uh, at the time to kind of define for you guys a short time frame from what we're working at. Um, let's kick in and take a look at that uh, initial press release. So we go back here to the initial announcement of uplisting through IPO. Now, this announcement, of course, was the one that uh, earmarked the New York Stock Exchange, the American Exchange for uplisting. Um, throughout the course of the last two and a half months that has changed to the NASDAQ. But I want to set for you guys a, a mini time frame in understanding what, in fact, we are shaping up for uh, as we are inevitably probably staring down uh, the uh, finalization uh, of this process and the uplisting to the NASDAQ, uh, which should be right around the corner. The date has yet to be announced uh, but I presume that we are probably coming to the end of this uh, hiatus that the company has been on. So all the way back to July 23, which represents about a two and a half month uh, time frame of, of, of being on hiatus, um, still being on the OTCQX markets. Uh, and, you know, being this time frame where the company hasn't been able to say a whole lot um, it's introduced a, a little bit of digression in the stock, nothing too crazy. Um, I would have suggested to be expected, uh, but soon to be uh, at an end here with a looming uplisting to the NASDAQ uh, imminent. So the press release defines the last two and a half months, which for Aduro uh, share owners that have owned the company for multiple years now, uh, it's been a spot on the radar. Um, it has seen very little churn in the stock, very little volume in the stock uh, being retained by uh, a market that we can't exit quick enough uh, in its inevitable uplisting to uh, NASDAQ capital markets. I believe, my friends, we are in the midst of a phenomenal opportunity, and I felt compelled to offer my insights on now, the time of shooting this video, um, how I have taken a personal stake uh, in the company based on this observed opportunity. And I, I want to define for you guys the listing announcement on the NASDAQ a little bit as uh, a piece of information that of which I will provide the snippets of information used in this video in the description. Um, go in, check them out so we can be on the same page as far as information that is conveyed on the channel so you can kind of understand what I'm looking at and how I potentially justify this opportunity that will be short-lived between announcing this video and the inevitable uh, uplisting, that of which I presume is right around the corner here, uh, being two and a half months deep into this process of, of IPO offering uh, for Aduro Clean Technologies. Okay, so here we have the registry listing for Aduro Clean Technologies. We know that the proposed ticker symbol is going to be ADUR. You can find this information on NASDAQ. It is forward facing. Uh, a couple of things I do want to bring to your attention in this overview listing uh, for what is to be expected here. The offer amount at just over $6.3 million. We know that that money is being raised for earmark for the next generation uh, reactor that is going to put AduroClean Technologies in the driver's seat uh, for accelerated commercialization of their technology. But I really want to bring your attention to the share price perspective here, uh, uh, bracketing between $4.25 to $5.00. I actually believe this has presented a very unique opportunity from the time of posting this video until the time that the company goes public to the NASDAQ um, in that now during this time frame where there is very little uh, noise uh, on the horizon, there is very little news on the company. And of course, the company cannot speak out currently that we are being presented with an early opportunity to actually look at this bracket at the lower end of the range. Uh, having closed its uh, share uh, price on Friday at around $4.30, 
presenting an extremely interesting uh, opportunity. And I want you guys to really look back at the history of how Aduro has brought in financing to the company. Has there ever been a financing offer through units that they have come in underprescribed? Never. They have either met their mark for what they go after and or they have been overprescribed in these financing offerings. Now, this being the largest of the company's history and knowing that Aduro is very conservative with what they go after, they go after what they need. Um, I believe that they could raise far greater than the 6.3 on the offer amount, but they are choosing not to. They are choosing to uplist, do it smartly, take what they need for the next generation reactor, and I presume, based on track record, that this will uh, absolutely, comparatively speaking, uh, be an overprescribed offering to the NASDAQ when, in fact, we get this offering. Okay, so I will provide a link to this overview in the description for you guys so you can review this and understand where the offer bracket in share price falls and compare that to the current offering price now. Uh, and see where I think this is providing some level of opportunity here early uh, in anticipation of the inevitable uplist to the NASDAQ. So as disclosed on the listing, you can see here that we're trading actively on OTCQX still. Very anemic volume, which I think has uh, allowed the stock price to digress to the lower range of the offering at 425. Current stock price uh, at the time of shooting this video uh, was around th 430. Uh, my entry price was just shy of that at $4.29. I felt that... In monitoring how this company has engaged in capital raises throughout the history of how they've funded the daily business and, and funded their operations and funded the R2 projects and funded their uh, operating expenditures throughout the year, which has been very, very conservative and very, very prudent. Um, and I will give credit to suggest very, very successful um, it has helped not dilute share owners over the course of owning this company, and it is a sentiment that me personally uh, very much appreciate about this company and what they're trying to do. My friends, as we look at this opportunity, I think we can all agree that an uplist is is inevitable. When that is going to happen, um, I do not have insight. I do not have a crystal ball on when that could happen, but. Uh, the presumption as a rational deductor <laughs> of how we've transpired uh, over the last two and a half months would suggest that we are coming toward the end of the process as opposed to uh, being at the beginning. And 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 what is going to happen on that uplist? What is going to happen when Aduro puts this bracket from 425 to $5 at work trying to raise a, a mere 6.1, 6.2, 6.3 million as disclosed in the uplisting overview on the NASDAQ. What, what do you think is going to happen? Uh, my friends, I want to bring your attention to some of the previous uh, funding raises, and this being by a magnitude or a factor of 10 in the company's history, the biggest by far in the company's history in going after a capital raise, which is going to help them accelerate their path to commercialization. I have no doubt that they'll do it. I have no doubt that the company will absolutely be accelerated in this process. And this is one huge milestone and step toward that end. But are we setting up for an overprescribed IPO? I, I, this is the rhetorical deliberation that I want to bring to followers of this story. We are looking at looming pressure, both geopolitically and here in North America. Uh, I'm going to share with you guys a bipartisan piece of legislation that has been proposed that is providing some uh, well-deserved incentive for an industry that is producing plastic at a rapid pace and setting some benchmarks, 30% to be specific, 
in way of supporting the circular economy for large plastic producers. Let's kick in and take a look at that uh, uh, plastic mandate that uh, came across my jet desk just a few days ago. This news article speaks to the uh, global uh, and governmental acknowledgement to the plastic recycling problem that we currently have nowadays. The article was very well written. I will provide a link to you in the description. There's an audio option. I recommend you put this in your ears uh, and catch this content. It speaks to the current recycling rate uh, in the industry here as we sit at 13%, which is dismal at best. In, in describing um, a, a situation now where our results in recycling based on our acknowledgement to the topic, failed uh, uh, technologies, inadequate technologies that have been deployed to achieve this minuscule 13% in the industry has called for bipartisan legislation to come together and say we need to enact some change. And the bill proposed is a mere 30% of recycled uh, content mandate which means that for every ton of plastic that is put out into the environment, um, a, a minimum of 30% has to re be returned in the form of uh, recycled material, and it only promotes the circular economy. This is where the technologies come in, and the need for certain technologies on the landscape to be introduced and really set some incentive for companies to look at the technologies that are out there and available, um, and there are quite a few, um, in, in assisting with this goal that is called for by 2030 to help with the, uh, the plastic problem that we currently have. Now, these are preliminary proposals. There is bipartisan support for the legislation. Uh, I will provide a link to this as you look at this story as being an early evolving story on the landscape in that we are trying to put our uh, minds around potential solutions that have been caused by multiple decades of uh, ignoring this problem and deploying inadequate solutions to a problem that has exacerbated beyond uh, anything that uh, has been put into place now with, with a mere 13% of, of all material being entered into recycling. And it forces us to look at the technologies that are out there and available uh, and put the pieces together in where these major plastic producers could be looking uh, to meet uh, these uh, inevitable mandates that are coming down the pike both here domestically in North America, as well as the global mandates, specifically those that are uh, being proposed in the European markets. Now, what does all this mean? Does it mean that there's just a group of us on YouTube that think that this movement is real? Does it mean that there's just a few of us who believe that this technology is real? Is there just a few of us that believe that there is um, a need out there uh, in the plastic recycling um, addressable market that needs to be uh, implemented immediately. I try to make this as singular uh, of, of an opportunity as we possibly can, taking into consideration the totality of information out there on the landscape. And I think we can all agree that we do need to tackle the plastic uh, problem. Um, we need the assistance of large plastic producers to buy into the importance of adopting new technology and doing so um, because the failed implementation of past methods have just not worked. Um, we find ourselves here in 2024 staring down a problem that is only getting worse year after year and is expected to get worse if we do not intervene and implement some of these technologies that we have right now that by all intents and purposes uh, have, have been verified and are currently being discovered by big industry as we speak. What type of opportunity does that present as a share owner? What does that present from a, a, an investment perspective? What type of opportunity could that mean for the future? 
What we are trying to do here, my friends, and I, I know that there are schools of thought that would suggest that investing in the microcap space is an impossible, impossible mission. It is futile. If, th- if something is impossible, it means that no matter what you do, no matter how hard you try, no matter how much research, success will not be rendered because it is a 100% certainty of failure. I want to bring your attention to the other side of the coin and present something to you in way of what could be potentially possible in this in this opportunity. I think 10 years from now and down the line, there are going to be people who evaluate the expertise that has gone into identifying opportunities like Aduro Clean Technologies so early on in the game that yes, does require some speculative thought, that does, yes, require some imagination, yes, does require some appetite for risk. All of that is on the table. I will quickly acknowledge that this is not easy. I will quickly acknowledge that this is a rare occasion to be brought to this opportunity. I will not sit here and tell you that opportunities like this come very often. I will not tell you that they are duplicatable. I will not tell you that a couple years from now that I can sit across from you and say that I have the next Aduro Clean technology to present to you. And finally, I will not present to you as we speak now that this is a guaranteed success in the market. Tomorrow is yet to be determined. And in speculative investing, such as a DuroClean technology, it compels all investors to do their own due diligence and understanding the opportunity that exists now, what this company has done in the past to be looked at, evaluated, right, scrutinized, to make sure that the stars are aligned to suggest that a Duro even stands a chance and puts themselves in a category of being possible into the future, as opposed to just being another impossible idea that never materializes into something very, very special over time. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into this message. I will leave links to all of the pieces of content that are forward-facing in the description and the comments below, so you can easily kick over, follow this story. It comes down to the days and hours now, my friends. I hate to put an ultimatum on this opportunity, but the clock is ticking. The clock is ticking. I have already made my move. I will disclose in the description the additional 3,500 shares that I have just made uh, within the last 48 hours of market activity. Um, That position is placed in there based on the justification that I explained to you with regard to trading now, currently, um, on the uh, OTCQX markets. And by nature of that lack of attention has allowed the stock to digress to more of the lower range of the offering. My friends, the rhetorical question that I will leave you with is, do you honestly think that a Duro with the lack of access is going to enter into the NASDAQ uh, markets with a lack of interest or buying? Or do you believe that this could be in line with what a Duro has done previously as an over prescribed IPO. I will leave that answer to you, my friends. Subscribe to the channel if you like the content. Leave your comments at the bottom of the video. We are getting down to the nitty gritty with seeing this thing come from the darkness and into the light. And it is going to be a proud moment for me to witness the reception on NASDAQ markets when this thing inevitably uh, turns to a major market. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the video and good luck in your investment future.